Well, hello everyone. It's been a very random couple of days and even a week really of interesting news coming out on manager updates. That's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back to Speaking Spurs. It is me, Kieran, talking all things Tottenham and an exciting development that has sort of made its way through over the last 48 hours. That man, his magic, you know, Maurizio Pochettino. Links with him possibly coming back to the club. Now, I don't want to get too excited because it might not happen. There's still a lot to do. So we're going to break down all the manager links. And then there's going to be a little bit I'm going to do at the end just to talk about something unrelated to management. But I won't tell you about it just yet. So let's get into it. Pochettino is obviously a manager that done wonderful things for the club, took us to a Champions League final, gave us the style that we're used to seeing, but better with that pressing football. Obviously, towards the end of his reign, the pressing football kind of dwindled a bit. It could be down to the fact that the players were getting a bit older, needed some fresh legs in there to continue it. But we had exciting football. We had the pressing we were pushing on to the next level. We challenged for the title twice, albeit we, you know, crumbled at the last hurdle. But things were looking up until after that Champions League final where it went a little bit sour and essentially cost Pochettino his job. Less than six months as PSG manager, he's linked back with Spurs. Obviously, he's won the two cups over there, but failed to win the league, something that, you know, PSG kind of walk every year and also missed out on the Champions League when he was knocked out by Manchester City, even though they'd, you know, made Barcelona look pretty stupid. But they couldn't make that final. And essentially, that's what PSG want. They're, they're used to winning the league and they really want to make a stamp on Europe. They want that Champions League. Pochettino couldn't deliver that and he didn't manage to deliver the league. But a lot of work to do. So we'll talk through the other manager links first and then we'll go back to Pochettino. So one of the random ones that threw his hat into the... Threw his hat? Threw his name into the hat. Jürgen Klinsmann. Now this is a bit of a random one. We get linked with him every now and again when we're looking for a new manager. Obviously he's a former club legend. You know, the fans love him. He's always spoken highly of Spurs since he's left us. He's managed some decent teams and he's done okay. However, he's been out of work since last February when he was released by Hertha Berlin. And that wasn't a great stint in his managerial career. But he's come out and said, he, meaning Daniel Levy, has my number. He can call me anytime. Look, this one's dead in the water. It's not going to be Klinsman. It's not what the fans are going to want. He's not high profile enough anymore for us to want him. Now, Another exciting link was Antonio Conte. He is leaving Inter Milan. He's poised to be replaced by, I think they were saying, Inzaghi, who interestingly was somebody that we were linked with earlier in the month. But Conte would be very expensive. He's one of the highest paid managers in the world. And there were reports coming out that we'd actually offered him £20 million a year to become our manager. Now, how true that is, don't know. Is it a real link? Again, we don't know. There's so much going on at the moment, especially in the Italian news. The reporters over there seem to be linking us with every single management movement, players, no matter what, players of ours going over there. Uh, the Conte one, I, I mean, I don't know if it's going to happen. I think it depends on the Pochettino deal, but Zinedine Zidane has also left Real Madrid. So there could be a possibility that Real Madrid are going to go in for him. I mean, Real Madrid haven't been playing their best football. They've had a pretty poor year as well as Barcelona. So they're going to want a manager that's going to, you know, stamp a bit of authority and build them back up. So could it be Conte? I don't know. Ten Hag, obviously that's somebody that was heavily linked with us early on. And then there was the news that broke from Ajax that he'd actually signed another year contract. Now, the reports have come out now saying that it wasn't a, a new contract. It was actually an extension, which is something we do with a lot of our players. And PSG have actually got this in place with Pochettino. They've got the possibility of a year extension. So 
it looks like Ajax actually activated that clause to keep him for an extra year, which would mean if we wanted him, he would cost us more money in compensation towards them. So, you know, another one, he's somebody we're very, very highly thought of, plays good football. There were worries that he wouldn't be able to tear himself away from the, the Ajax brand. But very much still in the mix. Now, other links, Graham Potter. Many of you will know if you watch my channel regularly, Graham Potter is somebody that I would love to become our manager. Obviously not over Pochettino, but if the Pochettino deal does not happen, I still would very much like Graham Potter. Plays great football. And doesn't really concede many goals at Brighton. Their biggest problem is they don't score goals, but we have the strike force to do it, especially if we can get Gareth Bale back for another year. So watch this space on Graham Potter. Nuno Espirito Santo. We've spoken about him before, but he stepped down as Wolves manager, another manager to leave their club. And obviously we were linked with him straight away. Now the reports on this one are saying that He's not somebody that we're interested in whatsoever. So him stepping down from Wolves, it had nothing to do with the possibility of becoming Tottenham Hotspur manager. Christoph Gaultier, another manager that has stepped down. So this is the guy that was in charge of Lille, took him to that title. He stepped down two days after winning the league. After pipping Pochettino and PSG to the league title, he has stepped down and said he's felt that now was the right time to step down. So instantly, the second he was gone, boom, he's been linked with Spurs as well. And he's somebody that a lot of the fans were talking about a lot earlier in the month. Now, isn't it? I don't think this is somebody we're actually looking at, but you never know, it could happen. Now, honourable mentions, Rafa Benitez, Scott Parker, Bielsa, all managers we've been linked with. And them, no, I don't think so. Roberto Martinez is another one that in the newspapers over the last week certainly is somebody who've been heavily linked with. Apparently, there were talks between him and the club. Uh, he even said to somebody that he is excited to get back to club football, which naturally broke to the press straight away and made everyone think, oh, he must be going to Spurs. But you've got to remember, there are many clubs now without managers. Especially, it's like a manager merry-go-round at the moment. It's not often you see this many managers step down. But you've got to remember, if he wants to come back to the Premier League, there was the possibility of Wolves, Crystal Palace, as Roy Hodgson has stepped down. Although I think Lampard's being heavily linked with that job. There's also the Real Madrid job. Now there's the Lille job, the Inter Milan job. So there's many jobs that someone like Roberto Martinez could walk into. So if we go through them managers, obviously Klingsman is a no for me. Antonio Conte... Again, I personally don't want him there. I want someone like Graham Potter, but I wouldn't be disappointed if he ended up being our manager. Ten Hag, another one that I wouldn't be disappointed with. Martinez for me is just a no. I think he's done well at Belgium and I like the way that he has them playing. But the difference is you're walking into a club where you have to pay for players. As an international manager, you get the pick of every single player from your nation. And the Belgians have a lot of talent to pick from at the moment. They've got some unbelievable players. They've got some aging defenders, but they're very good defenders. They've got some very talented midfielders. They've got goal-scoring forwards. They've got good wingers. So, yes, he's got to get them playing a certain way, and he certainly has brought them up there, but you go into a club where you're not going to get everyone you want, for me, I just don't think that's going to work. Um, Nuno Espirito Santo... Mm, okay, he'd be like my third or fourth choice because he is a bit more pragmatic and I don't like pragmatism. But he was very good on the counter and they were very organised. Gaultier is, is a no from me. And as I've already said, Benitez, Parker and Bielsa are just no's. I don't think Bielsa will come away from Leeds at the moment anyway. I don't like the language barrier. I prefer my managers to be able to communicate in English. Now, that's not me being like discriminative or anything. It's just... A personal preference for me. I prefer to hear my managers give their press conferences in English. I, I think it's more it just makes you feel closer to them as a manager. It builds that that gap between the manager and the fans. So I, I think that's why I was happy when Pochettino worked hard and his English got better. The better his English got, the more I felt close to him and the club. Uh, who else? I, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, Benitez, 
It's just like another Mourinho, really. And Parker, I just don't think he's ready yet. He's highly thought of at the club. Obviously, he's coached uh, youth-level players at our club before he moved on to bigger and better things. But I just think the, the job's too big for him at the moment and just not something he can take. So that brings us back to Pochettino. Whew. I tell you what, it kind of gets you excited. We haven't had much to be excited over. But if he is to come back, they're going to have to back him. Like the problems were before he left, obviously the Champions League final was a bit of a heartbreak and he was never the same after that. The reporters were saying it, the journalists, when they went to the pre-season after, Pochettino wasn't the same with the press. He seemed very closed and almost moody at times. He wasn't that same Pochettino that was excited and buzzing about. They were saying like if they caught him away from the cameras and away from training and you could have a beer with him and have a conversation. But when it comes to club matters, very stressed out. Now, I think the documentary played a huge part in that. I don't think he enjoyed the fact that the cameras were around the training ground all the time. You couldn't get on with work the way you wanted to. He doesn't come across as somebody that wants to be a superstar. He just wants to come in, do his job. He's a passionate man and, and that's it. He obviously made his comments about he's a coach. He's not the manager. He doesn't get to make decisions. So I think he would want to be backed in the transfer market and get his own players in. He doesn't want any of this. This is the player I want. And then, you know, Daniel Levy turn around and go, that's great, but we're not going to buy them because I want to save some money. So this is the player you're going to get. They're similar-ish to what you asked for. They're a bit younger and would have a higher sell-on fee. So that would definitely have to change. He would want more control. Now, reasons why Daniel Levy would want him back is obviously we played some of our best football under him. We had some of our best years under him. The players love him. The fans absolutely love him. And it's one of them where it's a safe bet to bring him back. But there's also that PR stunt behind it. Obviously, he's like Daniel Levy has annoyed the fans with the whole Super League thing. Uh, bringing Mourinho in. I know a lot of fans didn't like that. And I'm look, I'm not saying I'm all for Mourinho. But I'm not going to be completely negative. I I personally didn't want Mourinho as our manager to come in. But once he was in, I didn't want to be against him. Because had he been backed and we'd have got the players in that he wanted, I feel like we would have seen a very different season. We may have won something. We certainly would have been in the top four. Now, I'm not going to get excited because he doesn't play the kind of football that I would want to see. But I'm just saying, had he been backed we probably would have won something or been in the top four. He, he wanted a defender. He didn't get one. And interestingly, we were still, despite the fact that we looked very weak defensively, we didn't concede a lot of goals. Hugo Lloris was saving uh, things that would have been expected goals. He actually finished top of the top of the goalkeeping charts for that. So our defence conceded less goals than they are expected to as well. We also scored more goals than our expected goals. Harry Kane beat his. Son smashed his. Bale smashed his and barely played. So the goals were there. Obviously, there was the fallouts with Deli Ali, Danny Rose, uh, Dyer Sanchez and Old Viral all had periods where they were pulled out of the squad. Doherty and Aurier were rotated but left in the wilderness. Harry Winks left in the wilderness. Vinicius never getting a fair crack in the Premier League. Jedson Fernandez not really getting a chance and having to go back. Gazaniga being essentially forced out. So it was a bit crazy under him. So I think this is Daniel Levy trying to admit his mistake. And he's actually come out, uh, Daniel Levy, apparently, and has said that it was a mistake to sack him. And, and if you remember, if any of you watched the documentary, uh, Daniel Levy did actually say that it was the hardest decision he's ever had to make to sack Pochettino. And he said, only the future will tell whether it was the right choice. The future has told, and it has said, no, it was not the right choice. Although, just to play devil's advocate, Pochettino needed a break from the club. I think it it wasn't the best thing for the club, but I think it was the best thing for Pochettino. He needed to come away from that. He needed to experience something different, refresh his batteries, fall back in love with football and come back. I don't know if now is the right time, but I want it to be the right time because I love Pochettino and I, I'm excited at the prospect of him coming back. But, you know, apparently talks are underway. They're still quite a way off because despite his inability to win the league for PSG, they still want him there. They feel like he's a manager that can help build. They know he's good at bringing through youngsters. 
which in the long run will save them money in the transfer market. And there are a few players in their academy that are very, very talented and we will probably see some of them come through in the next years. Um, what else? He has a year left on his contract and he has the uh, option to extend a year. Also, which a lot of people don't know, Poch's family are actually still in Greater London. Now, they didn't move, and that's purely because his son, Maurizio, who was with us, left in January for Watford. And he's actually made his full first-team debut for them towards the, the end of the season. So his family are all here. He's not enjoying it over there. He has an affinity with Tottenham and, and has always said he would want to come back because there's unfinished business. He wants to win a cup with us. Like, simple as. He needs to win a trophy. So just come back to Spurs. You've had a bit of time away. He had a bit of time out of football anyway before he picked a job and I don't think he actually wanted the PSG job I think it was just more he needed to get back into football and that was the first big job that come along the only thing is Real Madrid are without a manager now because Zinedine Zidane has stepped down there is a possibility they will go in for him and Pochettino previously has described it as a dream job you know you don't turn down Real Madrid as a player or as a manager so if they come in we could be facing stiff competition but there is backup in the sense that we could go in for, for Potter, Ten Hag, Antonio Conte. So, you know, there's some good potential managers in there. Now, something else that I wanted to talk about with the Pochettino thing, it's uh, it's not just Pochettino related, it's manager related really. Obviously, season tickets and memberships are up for a renewal. Now, I'm a season ticket holder and we've got a week to go. I've been getting emails constantly over the last month, but we've had quite a few in the last few days reminding us that, you know, the renewals are there. And then they'll have the little subsections in the email of saying like, what do I get? And what does this do? And at the bottom of each of them, it says renew with a link. Look, they're desperate for us to renew. Now I've been holding out. Look, at the end of the day, I'm not made of money. I work hard for my money. A season ticket sets me back about a grand a year, £1,000 a year for 19 games. It works out around like 50-something pound a game, okay? Like when you break it down. Then on top of that, you've got to get there. So what we tend to do, we've got me, my cousin, my dad, uh, my mate, and his dad, Pete. So we all go up together in the car. It's 20 quid to park. So you've already paid your 50-something pound per ticket. Then say you split the parking at like a fiver each. So that's nearly 60 quid then you're going to get your rounds of beers so you're looking at 75 80 quid you might get something to eat if you haven't eaten that day say it's a, a, a saturday you might grab your lunch there you might get one of the burgers or a pizza or something like that so that's like another tenner so you're looking at like 90 to 100 pound per game for the standard of football that we were playing so like I've genuinely had to have a serious think. Like I, I can afford it, but I'm also saving for a house. So it's like if I throw that grand plus all the extra money I'm spending, essentially you're spending another grand. So if it's like 50 quid a ticket and you're spending 50 pound on travel, parking, food and drink, spending two grand a year just to go watch Tottenham disappoint. And look, I know there's going to be fans out there going, you're not a true fan, blah, 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 blah. Pretty much all our games are on TV. And... We all know if you want to watch a game that's not on TV, there are ways of watching them with English commentary these days. So, look, I can still watch every single game if I want. So the news breaks about Pochettino, right? I didn't take it too seriously last night, but it's ramped up today. So I then I then ring my mum and say, like, is, is dad going to renew his season ticket if Pochettino is manager? Uh and he said, oh, I was thinking about it, which is the same for me. The second that news broke, part of me was like, I need to hold out and hopefully they announce a new manager before that deadline for the season tickets next Thursday. If Pochettino is named manager, I am telling you now I am renewing my season ticket. So um, I said I said to dad, you need to call Pete to find out if he's renewed or, or he's renewing. So he rings Pete whilst I'm on loudspeaker Um on my mum's phone and you can hear him. It was quite funny actually, because he was like, hello, Pete. Hello, Pete, Pete. 
it's quite funny watching them with technology, isn't it? They like do that old thing where they have to look at the screen like this, look down, and then the old stubby fingers come out for the buttons, and then they can't hear nothing. And it is quite entertaining. So it took a little while to get anything out of them, but apparently Peter's renewed his season ticket already. So the logic behind that was they renewed on the off chance that Pochettino comes back because they said, look, if you didn't renew and then Pochettino came back, Harry Kane was convinced to stay, you'd be gutted. And it's true. It's one of them where it's, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So look, fingers crossed it's all sorted before the deadline. And I genuinely think the club are going to want to get it sorted before the season ticket renewals. And they're going to want to pull out a big move to please the fans because we have had a torrid season and, you know, I'm not blaming Mourinho completely for it. Obviously, you know, there were things that he did that were stupid. Freezing out players, uh, like bringing Delhi and Bale back into the squad. They had like one average game and he's like, no, freezes them out again. They should have backed him in the transfer market. You can't bring in a guy like Mourinho and not back him. He's won stuff at the clubs he's been at for a reason. He's been backed. He asked for players. They gave him the players. If you ask for something, you're saying you can work with them. Obviously, there's the flip side of that, that he's obviously not that great a coach if he couldn't work with what he had. But maybe the players just weren't good enough for top four. There's many ways of looking at it. But I'm hopeful. And it's just nice to have something to be excited about after that dreadful season. I know I keep saying it, but that's because I'm genuinely excited about the possibility of having Poch back. Look, it could go completely tits up if he comes back. But the good thing is we know we need a rebuild. And when Pochettino came in for his first time in charge, he got the players that he had in the squad playing and then had to move on the deadwood. I mean, players like, you know, Ryan Mason and Nabil Bentaleb, they were players that he actually moved on, but they were very important in his first like season and a half. He got them playing the way he wanted with that high en- high energy, high intensity, pressing football. Obviously, they didn't quite have the the quality that, that was needed to really push us on, but they did the job and those players were in there and they got the ball rolling. And Pochettino knew exactly what he was doing. He was putting his stamp in there, his style of play with the players that he had available to him then moved them on and tried to bring in better players. Look, they didn't always work. And I can guarantee the majority of the players he ended up weren't the ones he asked for. But if he comes in, Daniel Levy, you need to back him. Give him everything he wants. Just do whatever you can to bring this club back up to where it needs to be. We need to be competing for Champions League football. I'm not saying we need to be pushing for the title, but with the success we've had over the last few years, Pushing for Champions League football is a must. Europa League football is a minimum. The Europa Conference League can do one. Look, but it is a route into Europe if we need it. So it'll be a great competition for the youngsters and fringe players. Use them, get them some minutes, use your full squad. Then if we get to a quarterfinal, semifinals, final, then bring out the big guns. Get a trophy in the cabinet. Do you know what? It might not be what we want, but if we can win a trophy, it's a trophy. Winning breeds success. Winning leads you on to win more. It gives you a different mentality. So, yeah. As I said, excited. Hopefully we're not let down and they can get this one over the line. But um, I'm going to end this video not talking about managers for a second. Obviously, the news has broke today about players leaving the club at the end of their contracts. There's been loads of youngsters go. Uh, some shock ones, actually. Uh, Shiloh Tracy is one that's gone, and I thought he was going to have a big future. He was high, very highly rated when we brought him in, but it hasn't worked out for whatever reason. Kaziah Sterling is another one that's gone, and Jack Rolls as well. Like They're the three that I was most surprised at going. But... um Amongst the first team players, Paolo Gazaniga has gone. So he was somebody that they tried to get out the club, at least on loan, before this season started. And, and it didn't happen. So he ended up going in January to Elche. Um, and he didn't even get first team football the second he got there. He, he ended up being their number two. And it took a while. And then he went in and I think he played 
eight games in the end. He became their keeper towards the end of the season. But yeah, his contract's done and he's gone. A little bit gutted in a way because I kind of liked him. And when Lloris was injured, I thought he did a pretty good job. But you've got to remember that foreign player limit. Like this has really screwed us up because we just hadn't managed things very well. We had way too many foreign players and not enough homegrown. So someone like Gazaniga, after we brought Joe Hart in, it was just logical for him to have to go. So, you know, that's freed up a space now, technically. Now, the other departure that I want to talk about is that man, Danny Rose. 14 years at the club, longest serving player, smashed an absolute beauty against Arsenal on his debut. And it's just a shame, really. I, I, I do feel for the guy. He obviously clashed with with Jose. Um, he's fairly outspoken at times anyway. He's always one. He's not afraid to give his opinion. Like, don't get me wrong. He's a nice guy. He's a hardworking guy. And as you saw from the um, the All or Nothing documentary, it's not that he was being banged out of order. He just wanted to play more and just made comments that other players have been playing worse than him or training worse than him, yet they were in the squad and he wasn't. I think he was just trying to say, you know, if you're going to kick me out of the squad and give me certain reasons for it, you need to be doing that to everyone. So, you know, after that, he was kind of frozen out. Obviously, he went on loan to Newcastle. I mean, he did okay there, and I think they partly wanted him, but they they didn't want to pay, pay an inflated fee. They didn't want to pay the wages he was on. Now, he's only 30 years old now, which means he's certainly not done. But, you know, it just didn't materialise. He was holding out for a bigger move. He wanted to go to Milan or somewhere like that. But after the, you know, the season he'd had, it just wasn't going to happen. So it was Newcastle he went, came back, then didn't get a move. And essentially said to Spurs, look, I'm just going to run down my contract then. So they shoved him in the under 23s. He, he's had some injuries whilst he's been in there as well. Uh, played a few games. But this is what Elliot Thorpe had to say. And he's one of our youngsters. He says, it's sad that people will never know how much Danny did for all of us young players. He is the most professional and humble player I've ever met. And a great guy a great guy that I could go to for anything. Thank you, Danny. You'll be missed by all of us. And the problem is, with a lot of the players, uh, like Spurs obviously do their YouTube videos and stuff where we get to see the players doing their um, like quizzes and fun bits and uh, little matches against each other and things like that. Things that are meant to be fun to show us some of their personality. But Danny Rose isn't the most... Uh, confident and in-your-face kind of guy. But this is the thing. We don't see the players behind the scenes enough to really know, so we judge them based on the only bits we see. Now, in the documentary, he was made out to be ridiculously confrontational. But the thing is, with that documentary, they're there filming pretty much all the time. But they pick and choose what we see. There may have been many more bits of Danny Rose being perfectly reasonable, like a nice guy. And instead, they made him come across as an egotistical maniac that was having a pop at the manager and then pestering the owner uh, and chairman to get a move. But I can guarantee it's not like that at all. They have to dramatise all these things to sell at the end of the day. Amazon wanted to make money from it. Tottenham wanted to make money from it. You have to make it look sensational. And what better way than freeze a high-profile high player out and sack a manager and bring someone like Jose Mourinho in, turn it into a bloody circus. So, look, I'm genuinely sad to see him leave. However, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's a big if here. Maurizio Pochettino comes back. Danny Rose and Ben Davies were obviously two of his most trusted players that he interchanged a lot. Danny Rose is going to be without a club. There is nothing to stop Pochettino from bringing him back in. Look, I can guarantee one thing will happen if Pochettino comes back. He will ask if Danny Rose 
can train with us till he finds a new club. A lot of clubs do it for their old players, or if they don't, players tend to go to maybe somebody in a league lower down and train with them just to keep themselves fit. So Pochettino could very well invite Danny Rose back to the club to keep his fitness up. If he impresses, bearing in mind he's only 30 still, could we see Danny Rose back in a Spurs shirt? I mean, the one thing I'm annoyed about and, and gutted with is that he didn't get to say goodbye to the fans. I just wish they'd have included him in the squad anyway and just played him. Or at least... I mean, Ryan Mason couldn't actually play him in the end. Obviously, he wasn't in the, the squad, but he couldn't play him in the cup game because he was injured. Now, had Danny Rose have been fit, I mean, well, he said he was injured, but had Danny Rose have been fit, I would have been really tempted to whack him on the bench for that cup game, the cup final I'm talking about here, and brought him on just for five minutes because there were fans in the stadium. Just let him say goodbye. Like a player that's given 14 years and some of the memories he's given us, I think the way he's been treated by Jose, by the club, is absolutely disgusting. Obviously, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But I just I feel like any player that's been at the club that long deserves a chance to say goodbye in the right way. So I wish him all the best for the future. I wish Gazaniga the best for the future as well, obviously. But, you know, Danny Rose holds... Uh, a more special place in our hearts as Spurs fans. He's been part of, you know, Harry Redknapp's squad, building his way in, working his way up, cemented his place under Pochettino. Pochettino promised he would get him in the England squad, and he did. All of Danny Rose's caps for England came under Pochettino as Spurs manager. So, yeah, that's the way I want to end it, really. I want to end the video just saying thank you to Danny Rose for everything you've done. Good luck for the future. And I think we just wish that we could say goodbye in the right way. So yeah, that's it. Fingers crossed. Pochettino comes back in. I think it's what we all want. Then I get to renew my season ticket as quick as possible. But thank you so much for sticking around for that video. Managed to waffle on for about half an hour over managers and got excited. But I think we're all a little bit excited. So stay safe, you guys. And as always... Come on, you Spurs.